Hello, this is a quick video to talk about um, how we might uh, store data to do with the directory of services. And I just wanted to do a sort of demonstrate what I've been looking at and show you how it works. Um, so this is based on the idea that we have um, information about different organizations that um, cannot easily be uh, stored or described by a relational database um, and I guess the easiest way that I can kind of um, explain that is if we take uh, the type of information we have for director of services and if we try to imagine that as a spreadsheet um, and to excuse the drilling that we've got going on in the background um, we might have a hospital let's call it Hillingdon Hospital uh, and let's talk about a let's talk about the Boots Pharmacist in Uxbridge Farm Assist. Um, they, both those organizations have a name, which is good. They both have a location, which is, you know, X comma Y, wherever. Um, uh, but then they have a type, which is again consistent. That's a hospital. And that's a pharmacist. Um, but then um, Hillingdon Hospital has an A&E department. Um, uh, but Boots Pharmacist, it doesn't have an A&E department, but that feels not that column is not relevant to Boots Pharmacist. Um, but then as a Boots Pharmacist might have a minor ailment unit, um, in which case minor, my, minor ailment unit. Uh, the answer that might be kind of yes for Boots, but again, it's not ticked for Hillingdon because it's not actually relevant. There isn't it? hospitals don't have minor ailment units. It's not it's not relevant to them. Um, so we've got this kind of rather inelegant situation where we've got um, a series of objects that we want to uh, be able to kind of query the same, show me all services that are within this location, um, and have them return and see what type they are, and also see whatever fields are relevant to them. But we don't really want to be storing lots of columns of data that are not relevant to organizations. That's how a relational database would work because the structure is rigid and it's defined at the point where you create the table. It also means that if we come along and want to add a third type of uh, you know, organization, we might have to add on additional columns to cater for fields to do with that particular organization. So it's, it's not a particularly sustainable system. So the way we can uh, resolve that is to use a NoSQL database that rely that's a more of a kind of document based storage um, of which MongoDB is is one of them um, so MongoDB basically stores it still indexes data in the same way that uh, MySQL um, indexes data so you can still search for things and find things but the way it stores things is not based on a rigid data model so you can have a collection of things of which where those individual things might be different. They may have some common things. So in the case of our situation here, we've got common, they've all got names, we've got locations, we've got types. But the other fields are different. So if you have a hospital stored in the collection, it will have that field, uh, but it won't have a field from minor ailment unit because it's not relevant to it. So the, the way the data is stored on what data you store is more relevant to the objects themselves. It kind of better matches the real world representation. Um, so there's a question then around saying, well, you know, how does that work? Will it work with PHP? Will it, can we get MongoDB, PHP all to kind of work together and provide the kinds of things that we want? Uh, so I wanted to just do a demonstration of that um, to, um, yeah, just kind of see if it works. So. Uh, Here's one I prepared earlier. So what I've got is I've got a pharmacist class and that pharmacist class extends the directory of service class. The directory of service has a uh, type, um, it has a name, it has an address, and it's got location. Um, address field actually in this isn't actually really used, but the location is a, is a set of longitude and latitude coordinates. Um, so the pharmacist Oh, and then um, when the when the directory of services is is, is instantiated, um, it then sets type of according to the class. So um, when pharmacist is instantiated, type of gets set to pharmacist 
hospital gets set to hospital. So we've got another class here, hospital, which also extends directory of service. Um, and you can see that I've added these extra fields there. So hospital has a, has a has A and E, and the pharmacist has a minor ailment flag. And they each have this kind of describe me function, which literally just prints out a thing which describes what the thing is. And it says I am a, you know, whatever the name of this thing is, and it's a type of type of whatever the class is. And in the case of pharmacist, it says whether it has a minor ailment unit. Then if it's the case for hospital, it says whether it provides A and E services. And then just for purposes of explaining it, I've got a factory that creates, uh, creates it based on the data that it gets back from the database. So that's my structure. The key thing here is that I've got different classes. I've got a class of hospital, I've got a class of pharmacist. The structure of those classes is slightly different, but they have uh, some common ancestry. Uh, MongoDB does have, there's a, there's, a, there's a MongoDB package which just installs it and sets up the server. Um, I'm running a piece of software called RoboMongo, which is basically a uh, um, Mongo browser. Um, and we can see here that I've basically got my connection, which is running on localhost. Um, this is actually connecting to a, to a virtual machine, it's a Linux server that it's connecting to. And it's browsing that, uh, and there's no databases in there at the moment. Um, my script, I've also then got, based on this script, I've got a, fix a fixture script which basically creates lots of data and then chucks it in the Mongo database. So you can see here we create a pharmacist, uh, it has a name Boots, it's got a minor ailment unit, it's got a location, that location happens to be about 14 miles west of here. Um, we've got a hospital here called Great Ormond Street and that's kind of slightly east of here because it's in central London and it doesn't have an A&E department. Um, we've also then got two more hospitals, Hillenden Hospital, which does have an AD department, um, and that's again out west, about 14 miles from here, and the Sir John Radcliffe, which is a hospital in Oxford, so a bit further away from here, um, and again, that also doesn't have an A&E department. So we've got a mixture of kind of things here. They're all added to an array, um, and here we have just some code that is using the PHP Mongo clients. So we can see that here. There are two PHP Mongo clients. Uh, a new one, which is a beta one, which looks like it might be a bit more kind of object-oriented, but the current stable one is uh, not really a um, object-oriented. Uh, uh, well, sorry, it is, but it, it's not. It's, it's, it doesn't support the same amount of stuff as the as the new one. But I'm, I'm using the old one because that's the one that's stable. So we can connect to the client. It's basically just connecting on the whatever the default things are. So localhost. Um, Localhost is the default and port 27,017 is the default Mongo port. So uh, otherwise you could specify, you know, host and port and that kind of, you know, user details. There's no, at the moment, there's no uh, um, authentication, uh, no, no, um, no access control on, on, this, uh, on this database. So that, that could be um, added. Uh, we define a database, the mere fact, quite curiously, the mere fact that I've actually defined that connection there to DLS access will instantiate the database, which I, I find quite, quite interesting. Um, and then the fact that we're selecting a collection, if the collection doesn't exist, it will instantiate it. Uh, just to make sure that, that we're empty before I insert the fixtures, I'm just emptying the, the, the uh, database. Um, and I'm then doing a batch insert of all my services. So it'll take those four objects and it will in, it'll insert them. I'm taking advantage of something uh, clever on Mongo, which is the geospatial stuff. So you've got this, this idea of creating uh, what they call 2D sphere indexes. And you can do some really clever stuff with this. At the moment, I'm using it relatively simplistically um, to do stuff. But basically what it means is you add point information, which is represented here by the location field and the fact that we've got this pair of coordinates that is in format of longitude and then latitude. Uh, so I don't know why, but for some reason I thought it would be the other way around, but it does, the first coordinate will be the longitude, the second coordinate will be the latitude. That's what it expects. If you have a field that is like that, uh, then you can build a an index on that field. So you notice we've got location here, and I'm then referencing that location in this index, and saying so I'm going to create an index on that, and it's going to be a, an index of type 2D sphere, and that's what it's talking about here. So I'll, I'll post these links uh, with the with the video. Um, by creating that index, it then allows us to do some quite clever searches. But for the time being, I'm just going to go and run that fixture so you can see. Uh, what it does. So once again, I'm just going to go and refresh this, so we can see there's kind of very little in there at the moment. 
nothing, nothing there really, just a local database and stuff. So if I go back to my um, thing here, I can run my PHP fixtures script um, that runs, doesn't output anything, but if I go back to here now and we'll just refresh that, we'll see we've now got a DLS access database. I can go into that, I can go into collections, I can see the directory of service collections, and I can view documents. And we can see there we've got four documents stored. Um, notice that they're not, you know, it's not columns and rows, these are fields. So we've got four objects, and one of those objects is a pharmacist, and it's boots, and it has a minor ailment unit. The other three objects are hospitals, of which two don't have A and E units, and one does have an A and E unit. So, you know, it really is genuinely an object based object storage database. And we can see we've got these locations here as well. So the next thing I want to do is to be able to search for those, search through that, that stuff. So to do that, I've written a, a search script, uh, which again is just calling a, creates a Mongo client, uh, connects to DLS access, connects to the DLS access, the directory of services collection within that. I'm defining a search point, which I've picked as being the DLS London office. Uh, and a search distance, which we're going to, it's in metres, so I'm just going to reduce that down to uh, 10 kilometres. So 10,000 metres, 10 kilometres. We've then got this uh, fancy little um, query, uh, which you don't need to kind of worry about too much at the moment, uh, just to say this is effectively maps onto uh, this create a to query a 2D sphere index. Uh, I think is it this one? Yeah. So we've got this find, find, gee, that's right. So we've got this idea of db.collection.find, whatever the location field is, and then you've got this weird syntax of find it's near this geom uh, near geometry type point coordinates, then give the coordinates and never max distance. Um, and so you can see here we have got the um, location is our location field, which was that thing. We've got near, we've got geometry, we've got uh, we've got the uh, type of point, which is there, and we've got a set of coordinates, which matches here. Uh, it's being interrupted by a million things. Uh, and we've got a max distance there as well. Actually, I've got a min distance of those of zero, but I've also got a max distance, which is being picked up by that, uh, and the, the coordinates being picked up by that, that point of the DLS London office. We can then run the query and we can then uh, iterate through that, the results of that query and create the uh, instances using my fancy little uh, factory at the bottom here. Um, and that basically goes through and whatever the type of the, whatever the type of field is set, it creates that type of object. Um, and it then calls the describe me function and it just passes in there something which is uh, what what the Mongo doesn't do is return distances. Um, so obviously you know the la the latitude and longitude uh, where you started the search from. You know the latitude and longitude of each of the items. So actually, when it returns the results, it returns them in a, in a sorted array. But you can then calculate the the distance uh, manually. So I've just nicked a function here off off the internet, which is just taking two two sets of coordinates, latitude, longitude, latitude, longitude, and then just works out what the actual distance is in, in this case, in, in, in kilometers, and it'll print that out. Uh, so when I run that search, so bear in mind this is within 10K of the DLS London office, I think we probably won't, we may not get anything. Um, in fact, we do get something. So we get um, uh, Great Ormond Street, which is nine and a half kilometers away. Um, if I change that to be I know 15 kilometres won't do anything, but 20 kilometres should now kind of encompass uh, probably both uh, the pharmacist and Hillingdon Hospital, because they're both about 14 miles away. So there we go, we can see uh, we did a search within 20 kilometres, um, and it says you know, we're, we're 10k from Great Ormond, Great Ormond Street, we're 14 kilometres, 14 and a half kilometres from Hillingdon, we're 16 kilometres from, from Boots. Um, and finally, because the John Radcliffe is a bit further away, it's in Oxford. So let's see if 100 kilometres covers that. Yes, it does. So the John Radcliffe um, doesn't provide any services in 72 kilometres away. So we can kind of see here that, you know, it's providing results that are, 
you, know, you can query from a single source, but the actual objects that are the data that's coming out of it are, you know, their own thing. They're not. Um, they're not. It's not just kind of rows of data. They're actually objects. Um, the only thing to bear in mind is that that data, when it gets stored in, um, stored in the database, this object that gets stored, it is not a. It doesn't store it with the. It's not a. A hospital object. It's effectively an associative array of. Of kind of field, so it doesn't. You can't just kind of pull the object out and just say, "Bang, it's a it's a hospital." And um, in in the you know in the, in, the, in the an object form like a PHP object with that's an instance of a of a class. It's an associative array. So you can see here, I'm passing in the document when I'm uh, you know creating in the factory. I'm bringing that array. I'm looking to see if it's an array. make sure it is an array. Make sure there's a, a class exists. Make sure a class exists that matches the type of field within the array. Type of field stores the class name, so you know, it should it should exist if it's real data. So the type of there is hospital. So yes, we have got a class of hospital. And then so if it doesn't do, do any of that, it fails. Uh, if it does uh, work, then it creates a new instance of that of that class, and it populates it with the data. Uh, from the from the array, and then it returns it as a as a as a service object, um, and and that's it. So we've got um, a database able to store kind of more object based data, and we've got a script that is able to uh, search for that information and um, uh, search for that information and kind of return you stuff back that is you know. Uh, sorted by a distance from a, from a point. You can also specify different sort of criteria if, if, if you want, but this is the basic thing to just say something that is document based and associated by distance. So I hope that's been useful um, and I'll make the code and all the stuff available for that. And yeah, I hope it helps.